if you can't test them and you bring them home, <laughs> it's not uncommon to find ones that aren't working. And, and get a VHS that you're not afraid to lose because they'll eat them pretty quick. Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Picker. My name is Kevin and we are in the eBay cave today. And we got an interesting show for you today. I have this pile of VCRs and you probably see it in the thumbnail because I probably put it in the thumbnail. And I'm like, you know, it is time to list these VCRs. So I did a short little video on VCRs along with our selling today. I think we had nine items going out, all out of the Commonwealth Picker store, none out of the Homeschool Hustler store. And I think the total in sales is around $240. Uh, it's definitely above the 200 we shoot for, and I'm pretty happy with that. And we had a couple of viewer sales today. We hadn't had any viewer sales in a while, so that's always nice to see, and we can give a thank you to those folks. We're probably gonna put the VCR part on right now. So if you don't wanna see the VCR part, you can skip ahead uh, a few minutes. It's not too long, it's kinda interesting. Uh, I've just had a few people ask me about them, and so I'm gonna show you what I do, how you know what I do to test them, a couple things with listing, and how I usually ship them. Nothing special, but I figured I'd throw that in there for you. And then you can see what's sold. All right, I am going through a pile of VCRs and DVD players and combos and all that stuff. And I just want to give a little bit of an idea of how I do it. You know, some of you resellers, I don't want to sound condescending because you already know all this stuff. But if anybody's out there new and wants to sell uh, VCRs, they aren't quite as lucrative as they used to be, but they're still okay if you get them really cheap. And I would say maybe... If you can't test them and you bring them home, <laughs> it's not uncommon to find ones that aren't working. So, And, and get a VHS that you're not afraid to lose because they'll eat them pretty quick. This one is not a great one because it's one of the wide ones and it's a little heavy. But it does have a pamphlet, it does have a remote, and I bet it's working. So here we go, we're going to press play on this thing. There you go. It's always a good idea to make sure fast forward works. Make sure rewind works and you're good to go. I think that uh, there's, you know, don't clean them. Do not clean them before you test them. A uh, kind of common sense. Test them first, then clean them, and then take pictures, wrap the cords up, and make sure you have a system to make sure that you know the right cords and the right, uh, although most AV cables are the same and the right remotes go with them. So I usually put them in a bag and hopefully tape them to the back of them, but sometimes it doesn't quite work and you don't want to mess it up. So big rubber bands will work too, and you can kind of rubber band them to the back or rubber band them to the cord if the cord is attached. And that's what you do. I take pictures of them on the scale. My last picture is a picture of it on the scale itself. And I also take pictures of it with the yardstick up there. That's how I do it. And because I, I list on my phone, so I want to have all the specs right there on my phone so I don't have to do all the listing. I can do all the pictures first. Wanted to mention one other thing, especially if you're a new reseller and don't have a lot of feedback. Take a picture of it working with the TV. I would normally do that, except for I got my little paper thing up there. And usually because my feedback is so good and I have so many feedbacks that uh, they're not going to question it. So anyway. Just another little tip for you. If you want to do it, I would definitely get yourself a little TV. But they are they're time consuming, so you know your uh, your your return on your time isn't great. Sometimes your return on your money is pretty good though. I think it's also a good idea to either use rubber bands or use these cable ties and tie up all the cords, set them up nice when you take a picture. Sometimes it's not a bad idea. I wouldn't do it with this one because it's such a large VCR that I don't want to add any size to this because I have to keep the size down to keep it under dimensions but if it's a uh, shorter VCR some of them are, are a little bit less wide some of them aren't quite as long if it's a smaller one a lot of times I'll sell some blank VHS with it but this one's gonna come close once you box it up I don't really want to run into any problems with the size because we're gonna do calculated shipping on this thing and I always give multiple options I give people the lowest price parcel post FedEx you know priority mail give them all the choices in the calculated shipping so they can choose the cheapest for them to keep you competitive. I would not, I would not do free shipping on an item like this. 
It's also not the worst idea to have one of these little Scotty peelers off here if you bought it from a uh, thrift store. I use this to get the stickers off, but there's all kinds of stuff you can use to get the, the goo off. This one's not in great shape, but it just tested out fine and it's working. And I'll take, what I'll do is I'll take this cord here and I'll wrap this cord up and then I will attach, I'll put in a bag and I'll rubber band that cord to this cord. And if it had a remote, I would put that in a bag and I would rubber band it to this cord when it's wrapped up as well. And that way, when I pull this item, all the items are attached to this cord. That's what I typically do. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. Now, I would normally put it in a bag if it was a high dollar machine, which almost none of these are, a couple of them, I think. I would put it in a bag and then I would rubber band it to the actual power cord. That way I don't have to go hunting for the remote or the AV cable. Although in reality, if you're not afraid, you're not gonna forget the AV cable. You can put all your AV cables in a drawer somewhere and make sure you throw one in if you've listed it. That's one way to do it. Hey, and another thing, if you're gonna sell these things, you gotta buy AV, AV cables because most of them don't come with them. So when you're out and about yard selling and you see some AV cables, try and grab them for a quarter or 50 cents. I usually won't pay more than 50 cents unless I absolutely have to have them. And then I'll pay 99 cents at Goodwill most of the time. But keep an eye out. Sometimes you get a box of them for five bucks or something. So that's always a, a good thing. Now, this is not the right remote. So don't, don't freak out and say, oh, you're putting the wrong remote. I just wanted to show you. So I'm gonna take that remote off. Now I'm gonna give you an idea here. This is kind of the setup. Now I'm not gonna do that with this one. I'm just gonna sell it like this because it's one of the wider ones and I don't wanna put any extra space when I package it. But on the smaller machines, I will put that in there. This is not the correct remote either, but I'm just giving you an idea. And taking the picture, I like to put them on these little pedestals. If you get the picture just right, they look pretty darn good. Make sure, you know, you're, you're taking a picture of of the type that it is and on the back there's always a model number and sometimes on the back they have an additional a or b or something like that and you need to take a picture of the back make sure you get the right one and i usually take the flap off of there and make sure there's no corrosion and i show them in a picture and make sure there's no batteries in it when you package it away it might be in there for a year before you sell it i i sell these if you have a hard time selling a particular vcr um, or if you know by looking up the comps that it's not going to be easy to sell, throw one of these in, throw an AV cable in, maybe even throw a VHS rewinder in. I have a few of those hanging around if I can get them for 50 cents or a buck. Those old rewinders, you know what I'm talking about? And uh, you guys can sell them like that sometimes too. There's not huge money in this. Don't go out and buy every VCR. Some VCRs, the heavy ones, the old ones, they are absolutely not worth it. A lot of the Panasonic types are, the Sony's obviously are as well. Make sure you're looking up model numbers and make sure you give them a very good idea of the condition. Take pictures. If you find some flaws in it, make sure you have pictures of it. I usually list mine and say, hey, I don't do partial returns. I only do full re refunds. Everything, I, I tell them in there, I'm like, hey, this thing is tested, it's working. If you want a return, you can get a return, but you're gonna have to send it back. And I am, uh, I'm not gonna do any partials on it because I know it's fully tested. So it's usually what I do and it kind of discourages scammers, although you're still gonna get them and do calculated shipping on them. So at any rate, if you're a VCR seller out there, give me some of your tricks of the trade, put it in the comments below. All right, so I've been yapping about size here. This will give you an idea. This one is much smaller in all directions. So this is the type that I would put a VHS tape with. It's not a great brand anyways. You know, it's not one that I would necessarily pick up, but it's a lighter one. And, I mean, it's much lighter. It's probably two pounds lighter than this one, maybe more, and the size is smaller. So this is the type I would put a blank VHS with and maybe even put a rewinder with. If I think after looking up the comps, it'll be hard to sell. So, you know, I, I wouldn't normally pick this one up. Uh, I love the this, I love these like this that are smaller. But this one isn't particularly great. It's 50 cents though, so if it works, you know, I don't mind selling this thing for 15 bucks plus shipping. It's gonna take me maybe 20 minutes through the whole process. So I'm okay with making 30, 40, 50 bucks an hour on that. And uh, we'll have to see if it works though. When I was opening this thing up to test it, I found the remote control inside of it. What do you think about that? And what's even better is that it works. So we'll see if the VCR works and maybe we'll make 
a little bit more than I thought. VCRs with uh, remotes are always, always better. All right, really quickly, if you're gonna do Priority Mayo, you can actually use two of these number seven boxes and ship them out okay. If you're not gonna do Priority Mayo, you obviously can't use these, so you have to find the right size box. So if you know you're gonna be selling them, you know, try to have some of those boxes around. But one way you can do a lot of these that aren't wider than 12 inches, maybe longer than 12 inches, because then we're gonna double this thing up. But if they're not wider than 12 inches, you can definitely put them in here. Although I wouldn't want to squeeze one that's 12 inches in here. You need a little room to put some extra padding. But the trick is you, you take down one of these sides right here. Let me show you. I just take down one edge right there. Then I'm gonna do another box just like this. And keep in mind, these the height on these are, are not eight inches tall. So, you definitely have some wiggle room to put padding in the bottom, padding in the top. You have wiggle room if you want to put a VHS and sell that with it, or to put the remote on top, or even to sell one of those VHS rewinders on top. Or, because you're making this box longer, you may need to cut down the height in order to make it fit the dimensional shipping to keep the cost down. There's a few different ways you can do it, but the one that I like the best, and I think is the fastest, is you take down that side again, So now I've got it like this, make this box exactly the size that you need it because it'll go in and out. Exactly the size that you need it. So once you have your VCR wrapped up in bubble and then just leave, a after you put it in there in bubble, just like that, then you'll have your dimensions and you don't wanna go right up against it. You wanna leave a little bit more space because I like to put a little extra cardboard on either side. Um, maybe even a little extra bubble or some brown wrap or something like that. But there's how you do it right there, and you can size your box any way you want to size it. So, at any rate, that's how I do it. Obviously, you're going to either fold this flap up, or I just usually cut it off flush with wherever the size of the box is and tape it up. If it's a long VCR, you may need to cut down the size. And so you either use a box resizer. I don't. I just measure it up with my eye. Might even put my finger down there like that, and then cut it an inch or however tall you know however i want it and then i usually uh can use the vcr itself or i'll put something in to fold it down but that's how i do it at any rate hope it helps all right first item up is this euro pro spa massager and these things sell pretty well in general the massagers sell pretty well those big uh big giant ones sell really well and there's different brand names i have never sold this one before and so it took a little longer because it's not a brand name that people would look up very often. It looks like it's something that came off of QVC, to be perfectly honest with you, or like the Home Shopping Network. But it is pretty big. It's pretty powerful. I tested this thing, and it's got everything with it. And it sold for $25 plus shipping. So even if I paid five, we're still making, you know, somewhere close to $18 profit on it, maybe $17. All right, I told you the market on super shooters was pretty high right now, and it is. It, this one sold for 40 bucks, $39. And you'll see it's not in great shape, but it's tested, it's working, and it sold pretty good. So I'm going to get another one out, and I'm going to list that too. I think I have two more to go. Um, one I found not too long ago. I usually list them before, you know, try to get them listed around Halloween. People buying for Thanksgiving, people buying for Christmas. But this year, I think what might happen sometimes is people go to other people's houses and they make cookies and they see things like this and they're like hey we got to get one of those and then they go on and buy them or people have old machines like this and they just stop working so they just buy a new one um, or they go out and get the parts which that's good too because i sell the parts but that is a pretty nice little profit this was three dollars and it turned into 39 bucks so even though I've had two returns this year on these super shooters, I'm making you know hundreds of dollars off of them because I usually sell between 10 and 15 of them. And even the ones that are returned, I'm getting my money back on the return, plus I'm making money on the parts. All right, this is the second set here. Two mugs, Pioneer Woman mugs, and my wife bought them on clearance, brand new. I think back in the summertime, she bought a couple because she liked them, and then she looked them up and she's like, man, these things sell. And so she went back and bought every one they had, four bucks a piece. And this is the second one we've, actually it's the third one we've sold. She listed it the first time and accidentally forgot to put the quantity at three. She's like, I wonder why those things aren't selling. And so I looked them up and it's because they weren't listed. And so I just listed them really quick 
and they sold for $39 plus shipping and they were $4 a piece. So eight bucks turned into 39 plus shipping. Should be about a, I don't know, probably close to a $29 profit, something like that. I also did a video on shipping. A couple of people asked me about how I ship these things. They're really not too hard. I think, I think, I either put it on a video a couple of videos ago or it's on Commonwealth Flipper. I think it's on Commonwealth Flipper actually where I did a video on shipping and I did it in regular time. And I think I'm gonna do one in the future where I'm actually talking my way through it instead of playing music behind it because I've had a lot of people who are new resellers really like that. So if you do, go ahead and go over to Commonwealth Flipper and subscribe over there. We're getting close to a thousand over there, which is awesome. All right, this guy is going out to a viewer. It says, gotta have one of these, I think. For those of you who ask, I have a computer screen up here. I had somebody ask again there, what are you looking at? looking at a computer screen so my eBay sold page is up I uh, gotta have one of these I think we will ha I think he will make a great addition in the viewing field of my upcoming YouTube channel you've helped me so much in expanding my knowledge about eBay in a couple of months I've learned what it would have taken years of trial and error to learn I don't know about that thanks a million hey thanks a million I appreciate you that's a very kind comment. And this is going out to Ricky, the country picker. So country picker is going to have a YouTube channel. And I don't think he has any content out yet. But uh, maybe you can subscribe anyways. Go check it out. All right, this is just a winger bag. It's a computer bag. And it is padded. And it is a crossbody messenger bag for a laptop. So this is nothing special. I probably picked it up for a buck. It sold for $9.95 plus shipping and it took a long time to sell. This used to be great. You used to be able to sell this stuff like crazy. Now only the top models of especially the backpacks. Um, sometimes the uh, carry-on luggage type stuff sells pretty well. I mean, it'll sell, but it usually tends to sell when school starts up. And it doesn't sell nearly as much as it used to because a lot of the big warehouse stores are now selling it pretty darn cheap. So uh, the market's gone down on it quite a bit. All right, here's a Rugrats. This is uh, Dill Pickles, 1998. And it, I almost didn't buy it. Matter of fact, I remember in the video, it was a yard sale video, and uh, KP Train him out there said, oh, you better not walk past that thing. And I didn't, I came back and got it. But I was debating it, because it's not in great shape, and it's a little dirty, and you can't take this thing off. It's, you know, it's plush here, and then hard here. So, you know, it's only so much you can do. But it is working, it does have the pacifier as well which usually these aren't lost because they're attached. And it was working, it's not working now because I took the batteries out of the back. I don't ship things with batteries in it. No. 1998 and it does work and it sold for 15 bucks plus shipping. I think I paid a couple bucks for it. All right, speaking of super shooter parts, this one sold. This is the super shooter piston replacement. And this guy sold for nine bucks, nine bucks. So that's pretty good when you can make a, like a $5 profit on a little piece like this. All right, this one's going out to a viewer. This is, I think, the second one I've sold of these to a viewer. So this is old Richard Petty, the king, as Turner calls him, and, and everybody else. <laughs> and this one sold for $9 free shipping, and it's going out to Hannah. Hannah, we really appreciate it. And this is the second thing Hannah's bought. Hannah bought a hat, and she told me the hat's uh, not there on time. So I looked back and made sure it wasn't my fault, and it's not. Post office screwing something up. It was scanned in and hasn't hadn't appeared on anything yet. So. Hopefully that gets to you, Hannah. If it doesn't get to you, let me know and I'll make it right. In case you're wondering back here, the Harley, a lot of people have been asking about the Harley, the 3D shirt that we got at the Nirvana Plush sale. I have not listed it yet. It has not sold because I haven't listed it yet. So normally the items that are hanging here are items that I've sold. But I had this hanging up earlier because I wanted to take pictures of it. I still have to put it on a different hanger and I wanted to take sizes so I could get an idea of what size it is because the tag doesn't have the size on it anymore. So. Anyway, that's what's listed. So don't think, if you've been asking about this, don't think it's sold yet. It's not. I haven't even listed it. This guy sold to a viewer as well, and this came in right before we started doing the show, and this is to Crystal. So let me read what Crystal put. She said, Hello, Kevin. I'm a subscriber of your channel, and I love all your videos. All of them, really? I've only been selling on eBay for four months now, and you have been helping me the whole time. I kind of feel like this little guy is almost my mascot, or your mascot, LOL. So I need one of these for my office. Thank you so much, Crystal. So, all right, I'm happy to send it off to you, Crystal, and thank you so much for the kind words. That remind me of something. Another viewer out there, Ellen, and Ellen always comments in the video. She said, you know, this should be everybody's Valentine's gift this year. She said, you, you should promote it as a Valentine's gift. 
So there's my promotion as a Valentine's gift, but here's reality. If you give this to your loved one for Valentine's and they love it, more power to you. I don't think I would take that risk though. All right, thanks for joining us. And as always, there's something else on just about every video other than what's sold. And if we did the VCR thing at the beginning, we may not have anything at the end, but what the heck, stick around, you never know. See you next time.